A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And on today's show, we're going to be looking at some hot topics. We have Zamfara to spend three billion naira on consultancy services for government projects. Another hot topic we're looking at is a Nigerians turn to traditional healers as prices of drugs go up. Yeah, so those are the hot topics we'll be looking at this morning. We'll also be looking at what the national dailies are saying, um, as well as some top trending stories. Um, but first, I think we should take our quote of the day. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. You are the pilot of your life, locking your destination, take off to it from where you are. And this is Vimal Shah Bitko um, from Kenya. He's, he's one of the top um, guys at Bitco and he's from Kenya. And his quote today says, today is the beginning of the rest of your life. You are the pilot of your life, locking your destination take off to it from where you are and I mean it's mindset Monday so this just tells you that wherever you are do not limit yourself today is what you have you have the present you're not promised tomorrow and so you need to make hay while the sun shines as they say today is the you know beginning of the rest of your life so whatever you do today determines the outcome of your future so why not lock in your destination the destination that you would like to see that place that you aspire for yourself lock it in today and start to take off because you are the pilot of your life and that is that is what um our, our quote is saying today but yes okay so let's move over to our top trending stories this morning and this is quite a sad one um, over the weekend we were we were rocked with some very sad re and devastating news so like over the weekend so there was some very devastating and sad news and it was the fact that um Herbert Wigwe, who was the CEO of NNPC Holdings, um, passed away with his wife and his son as well. And so um, right now we have like the, the company, you know, they issued a statement on Sunday that confirmed Wigwe's death alongside his wife and his son in a helicopter crash in the United States on Friday. According to the statement signed by the group company secretary, Sunday Ekochi, the appointment of a new head was in line with the company's policy. And also on the board, the ill-fated Chapo um, with three others, including the former chairman of the Nigerian exchange group, Abimbola Ogumbajo, which is quite sad. Preliminary reports suggest that the crash could have been caused by wintry weather and rain, a member of the National Transportation Board said after a press briefing on Sunday. Wigo was appointed Access Holdings GCEO on March 28, 2022. Prior to his appointment, he had occupied various positions within Access Bank, from being the Deputy Managing Director at Access Bank from 2012 to 2014, where he became the Group Managing Director and CEO. He served as the chairman of Access Bank Ghana, Access Investments and Securities Limited, Central Securities and Clearance System, and presently as the chairman of Access Bank Limited and Unified Payment Services Limited. Meanwhile, more tributes have continued to pour in for the late banker, the latest coming from businessman Femi Otedola, who describes weak ways debt as a loss of a banking genius. Um, this is quite a very very sad news um, that we started with over the weekend, hearing that um, Herbert and his, his wife and his son, they had passed away due to the um, helicopter crash in the United States. I remember, you know, reading this news. I got this news on my way home. I was in the car and I opened my WhatsApp group because um, we, Herbert went to my school, was a proud alumni of the federal government college of worry and so i opened the whatsapp group of my alumni association and i saw the news and i'm like oh my god 
And everybody on the group was just saying, no, it cannot be, it cannot be. And it was so sad because we know who he was. He was such a good man. He was a force. He was a visionary. And this is a colossal loss for um, everyone. The banking industry in Nigeria, if backs Nigeria at large, um, and everyone who is near and dear to him, you know, is, is just an irreparable loss. And at this point, we just hope, you know, we pray that their souls rest in peace and um, we pray for the fortitude to bear this loss for everyone who is near and dear to the Wigwe family. And yes, our, our hearts, you know, go to everyone at the moment. It's quite sad, but God knows best. All right, let's move over to another story. So our second top training story was Kanu Agency sells warehouses for hoarding foodstuffs. The Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission has confiscated 10 warehouses containing assorted foodstuff in the Dawanau area of Dawakin Tofa, local government area of the state. The commission's chairman, Mr. Muhi Magaji, disclosed this to newsmen shortly after confiscating the warehouses in Dawana, International Grains Market, Singer Market, and Quarry Textiles Market on Sunday. He said that the owners of such warehouses were nowhere to be found during the operation, but that those that were but those that were opened were sacked full of commodities, including spaghetti, rice, pasta, sugar, and other food items. He said the owners had been issued notice to report to the commission preparatory to facing charges before the court of law for their illegal activities. The agency started operation last Thursday and have made a significant impact towards stopping the instant rise in the price of essential commodities. According to Magaji, the agencies were able to the agency were able to stop the instant increase in prices of commodities. I'm sure if you're watching this right now, you know what the prices of food is in your area. It is quite expensive, quite exorbitant. There are people who cannot afford this food anymore. There are people who cannot even afford to put, you know, two square, two meals. Talk more about three square meals. Some people have to eat once a day. And it's quite sad that some people would actually hoard this food, keep it in warehouses, store them just to, you know, hack the price for no reason. And I mean, I commend the agency for doing this. I think as many warehouses they can find, they need to start to open them up and see what's in there. And if no one comes forward, then I mean, put them on the market because people need this food. You cannot be hoarding food at this point where everything goes up and it's going up. It's, the prices are being hiked because, you know, you're keeping them, you're hoarding them. It's, it's, it's not commendable at all, but I will commend the agency and I think they're doing a very good job. And yes, I, I hope they continue and I hope they don't seize them. That's another question now. Do they seize them? What do they do with them when they seize them? Do they, you know, put it on the market? Do they give them as palliatives or do they just keep them and share them? So that's another thing. I would love some transparency on um, what they actually do with all of the items that they confiscate. All right, moving over to our final story. This says Sarah sues Apabio Abbas over lack of clarity about 344.85 billion Naira budget. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, CEREP, has sued the leadership of the National Assembly over unexplained details of 344.85 billion Naira in their budget. Joined as defendants in the suits filed last Friday are Senate President Mr. Godswill Akpabio and Speaker of House of Representatives Mr. Tajdane Abbas. Mr. Akpabio and Abbas are sued for themselves and on behalf of all members of the National Assembly. Serap, among other reliefs in the suit filed at the Federal High Court, Abuja sought an order of mandamus to direct and compel Mr. Akpabio and Mr. Abbas to disclose clarify and explain details of the 344.85 billion Naira National Assembly budget in the Appropriation Act 2024. In the suit, Serap argues details of spending of public funds by the National Assembly have been mostly shrouded in secrecy. Nigerians have the right to know the details of the budget by the lawmakers and the rationale for the budget. 
according to Zerap Upper City, in the spending of the 344.85 billion Naira National Assembly budget would have negative impacts on the fundamental interests of the citizens and the public interest. The suit filed on behalf of Serap by his lawyers Kola Wale Uluwadari and Andrew Wanko read in part, it is in the public interest and the interest of justice to grant this application. Nigerians are entitled to their constitutionally um, and inter internationally recognized human rights to information. If others said the National Assembly increased its own allocation in the 2024 budget to 344. 48 billion an hour. The new budgetary allocation to the National Assembly is over 70% of the 197 billion naira proposed by President Bola Tinubu for the lawmakers in the budget proposal submitted to the National Assembly. No date has been fixed for the hearing of the suit yet. All right, I mean, kudos to Sarah, they're always, I would say, they keep looking out for, for the citizens. Um, it's, it's not news that our government or our politicians, you know, they for every time they need to make an appropriation bill. Over the years, we've seen time and time again where the bill um, is always increased, the budget is always increased. They come with one, and when they're back again, it has been increased by some figures. And I mean, I think Nigerians deserve to know what their what their money is going into. Tax, these are taxpayers' money. So it is only right that you're transparent, you know, with taxpayers' money. You cannot be spending our monies, and we don't know what you're using it for, if it's for your own personal gain, or if it's for your own personal pursuit of success, or if it's just your own personal being frivolous, right? You cannot be using taxpayers' money to buy 160 million Naira SUVs. You cannot be using taxpayers' money to buy a presidential yacht. You can't be using taxpayers' money to just renovate. Fine, I mean, you should renovate the, the, wherever you're staying because it's a government house. However, you need to be prudent with such monies because a lot of people are suffering in Nigeria. So you cannot be taking the money, monies that are meant for everyone, you know, to at least get the basic amenities, you're using that for something else. So we need transparency, we need clarity, we need to know what this money has been used for. In fact, why you need the money? First, why, why the secrecy? Why are you keeping the money? Or why are, you, why are you actually asking for money that we cannot tell what you're going to use the money for? And then you just go ahead and you spend it? You, you need to report to the citizens of Nigeria because we... I want to believe we elected you in. So you are there to serve. You're not just there for your own personal ambition. You're there to serve. And so, I mean, kudos to Sarah. I love the fact that every single time that things like this happen, they are always on the toes of the politician. And yes, we, we, demand, we demand some form of transparency. All right, that's it on our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning in Off the Press. Please stay with us.